In the year 1580, an elderly woman was dragged through the streets of Dublin and brought to the prison under Dublin Castle. She remained there for four years until her death. Her name was Margaret Ball and her crime was having the mass celebrated in her house. We're here in St. Patrick's College, Maynooth, the National Seminary and a Pontifical University. Since its foundation in 1795, this place has represented many things to many different people. What did it mean though to the people of Ireland at the time? Think about the situation for the previous few centuries since the Reformation. There were various times of more savage persecution like the time when Blessed Margaret Ball uh, was martyred in Dublin Castle. There were other times when penal laws were implemented to grind down the fidelity of the Catholic faithful to the Mass. The aim was that the Mass would eventually be wiped out. So for example, in the late 17th century, all the bishops of Ireland were expelled. Some priests were allowed to celebrate Mass, but they had to register. No new priest could be ordained because the bishops had all been expelled. No training of priests could take place. No priests could come into Ireland from outside. The aim was clearly that the Mass would eventually die out. The Catholics of Ireland during these times of persecution remained incredibly faithful to the celebration of the Mass and they had a great love for the priesthood because of their love for the Eucharist. There are so many stories about their faithfulness to the Mass, having Mass celebrated in their houses even though it brought great risk to their families. Going to Mass is celebrated outdoors, in ditches and in Mass rocks. Even in the heart of Dublin, going to Mass in the back rooms of pubs. Throughout these times, priests were generally trained in Irish colleges on the continent. Centres in places like Antwerp and Louvain and Rome and Lisbon and Paris. Irish men would go out, study their theology and come back to the mission in Ireland. There were other cases of priests being trained privately in Ireland, but of course resources were lacking and their training was often poor. At the time of the French Revolution, many of the Irish institutions on the continent were closed and the British government became very concerned about the possibility, the real possibility of revolution in Ireland in imitation of the French Revolution. And so they decided to set up a seminary in Ireland to give permission to Catholics to have education of young people and education of trainee priests in their own homeland. It was given grudgingly piecemeal, but eventually this seminary was founded in the year 1795. From that point on, bit by bit, the confidence of Catholics would grow in this place. There were homegrown Irish priests to minister in Ireland. The foundation stone of this place behind me was laid in 1796 on the 20th of May and it was laid by several important members of the Irish House of Lords as well as Irish clergymen. It was an incredibly important moment. After laying the foundation stone here on the lands of the Duke of Leinster who was so supportive of this initiative, the Catholic bishops were invited to Dublin Castle, this centre of Protestant Dublin, this place where so many people had suffered in prison for their fidelity to the Mass, including Margaret Ball. And there the Catholic bishops were treated well. They had dinner with the Lords. And at that meal, one of the bishops was invited to say grace before meals. It was a hugely significant moment and a sign of the thawing in relations between establishment in Ireland and the Catholic hierarchy. One of the aristocrats who was present at that meal wrote in his diary afterwards, this was a very new scene for the kingdom. It was a very new scene indeed, a new scene for the Catholics of Ireland. Their confidence would grow and eventually their liberation would reach a climax in Catholic emancipation in 1829. This place, as I said, means many things to many people. But when I'm here, I think above all of the many generations of people who remained faithful to the Mass through times of severe persecution. This majestic place is a fitting testimony to their fidelity.